Hello, and welcome to your new job in paranormal investigations and eliminations. I'm Greg, and in these series of training videos, we'll walk you through control, detection, and entrapment of those invasive spirits. But to do that, I'll need some help. I'm Chris, and I'm the experimental equipment technician for the Northern California Ghostbusters. And on this tape, we'll be introducing you to the basics of both ghosts and ghost busting. I'll be a resident ghost expert, providing you tips and tricks for ghost players, as well as going into detail about various ghost subtypes. And I'll be helping with the teamwork, tactics, and loadouts that you'll need to ensure that a ghost is successfully removed. With that said, let's begin on tape zero of the Northern California Ghostbusters training series. Subsidiary of Ghostbusters International Incorporated, all rights reserved. Now we'll go over the basics as a ghost. This section will cover ghost UI, ectoplasm energy, haunting, possessing, attacking, dealing with civilians, and avoiding capture. Before we begin the training, a kindly reminder that when you select find a job on the desk of the firehouse, the upper left corner will allow you to select your preference, whether it be ghost or ghostbuster, or even no preference at all. With that said, let's begin the training. The ghost UI user interface can be intimidating at first, but don't fret. We'll walk you through it. The top left corner is a room's haunt meter. This also displays the room you are currently occupying. The top middle is your building haunt meter. Getting this to 100% is your main goal. The right corner are your current rifts in play. These serve as extra lives for you, as well as spawn points for the map. We'll go over rift tactics and attributes in the advanced video series. Following straight down on the right are some of your ghost abilities, such as attack, Dash, and Ghost Vision. Ghost Vision allows you to locate rifts, see civilians and Ghostbusters through walls when you hold down LT on console. The lower right corner are your ghost abilities. From left to right, you have your Summon Minions ability, the Ghost Unique ability, and Ultimate ability, which vary based on the ghost you're playing as. And finally, the most important one, your Ectoplasm Energy level, that's in the lower left corner. This is how you use abilities and haunt objects. Your ectoplasm energy will slowly regenerate over time if you're not using ghost abilities. Remember to always keep an eye on your ectoplasm energy levels, so you're well prepared for a throwdown if the busters want to get up close and personal. Your goal as the ghost is to fill the primary location to 100% haunt and avoid capture to win the game. You do this simply by existing, scaring civilians, slamming Ghostbusters, and haunting objects. At the start of a match, you'll spawn in a random room away from the Ghostbusters. You should immediately begin haunting objects in the room as fast as possible by pressing and holding B on Xbox or Circle on PlayStation. This will allow you to haunt objects speeding up a room's haunt meter. Remember that rooms that are large will take more time to reach 100% haunt. Each room that reaches 100% will add 25% to your overall haunt location meter. Fun fact, haunting objects gives the Ghostbusters PKE false positives. Try to waste their stuns on haunted objects instead of you. As a ghost, you can possess objects in the world, both large and small. You can possess an object by approaching it, pressing and holding X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation. While in a possessed object, you're invisible to the Ghostbusters' naked eye. Some objects move faster and slower than others. Smaller objects tend to move faster and make you harder to hit for the Ghostbusters. Some objects are stagnant and are unable to move. The mop bucket and the floor buffer are great objects to possess if you need a quick getaway. Remember there is no cooldown to possess an object, so feel free to experiment with objects you like the best. Fun fact, while in a possessed item, you'll recover ectoplasm energy faster. If you're not in motion, you'll regain energy at double the speed. Wow, that's a lot of slime. You're not defenseless as a ghost. You have abilities to attack or scare. That's your primary method of sliming Ghostbusters. If a Ghostbuster takes enough slime damage, They'll be put in a down state, unable to do anything until a teammate revives them or they pick themselves back up. Not only can you attack busters with a standard scare move, you can also dash by holding L3 through them, which causes slime damage. But wait, there's more. You can also summon minions to attack nearby civilians and ghostbusters. 
Remember these tools when you go on the offensive. If you really want to be aggressive, it's easy to remember the best attack combo that nearly every ghost has. Possess an object. Then when a Ghostbuster is close enough, attack, run through them, do a 180, and attack again. This is a great way to down busters and make a quick getaway. If you're having trouble, try to remember para. Possess, attack, roundabout, and attack. Fun fact, most ultimate abilities have a wind-up time. If a Ghostbuster tethers you in this time before the wind-up is complete, the ability is cancelled and triggers a short cooldown. So learn your ultimate ability's timing. Dealing with civilians. Remember that fully scared civilians add 5% to a location's main haunt meter. Don't sleep on sliming those pesky tourists. You can also scare civilians by possessing an object and taunting them by pressing Y on Xbox or Triangle on PlayStation. This ability looks like a hand waving on the UI screen. Once used, it will take a small amount of ectoplasm energy and the civilian will have a caution sign above their scare bar. Scaring them now will cause a critical strike and in some cases, cause the civilians to instantly reach max scare levels and flee the location. Fun fact, remember that the more percentage of haunt you have in a location, the easier it is to fill a civilian's scare meter. As a ghost, you can fly, possess objects, attack, but you can also dash by pressing L3 on the controller. This will allow you to fly at high speed, but it's the biggest energy drainer so be aware of your ectoplasm levels when dashing. As a ghost, you should never travel in the open. Always try to move while in a possessed object. You are a smaller target for the busters, harder to see, immune to ionizer pods, and you'll regain ectoplasm energy faster. There are certain walls you can pass through as the ghost. You'll see them in the ceiling and floors as well. They'll appear as blue cracks that open into a portal as you approach. Sprinting through these portals allows you to phase into the next room. These spawn in different locations in each map. Make note of where they are, and if a Ghostbuster is hot on your tail, head toward one and sprint through. It will allow you time to reset and lose the Ghostbusters. Remember to take advantage of your environment. Duck, dive, and swing between objects at a location like pillars, furniture, and doorways. Breaking line of sight to a Ghostbuster makes it that much harder for them to secure you in a tether. If you're not under proton stream pressure, you can approach a ghost trap from the side and close it, but that's not all. You can also grab a closed ghost trap and hide it somewhere a Ghostbuster can't reach, forcing them to go back to the entrance to pick up a new one, thus wasting their time. If stealing the ghost trap isn't your style, you can also destroy it with enough attacks as well. However, they are durable, so make sure that you have energy to spare. Fun fact, remember you can still move even while stunned. Try to make the best of your situation if you are stunned, and be aware of trap locations. If you happen to get tethered, pull in the direction indicated on the screen and mash the visual button to get out. Should you find yourself being sucked into a ghost trap, follow the same method of mashing via button on screen, but also notice the arrow that will change left to right. Hold the indicated direction and smash your heart out to escape. Use these methods to improve your ghost play, learn and evolve to be a better spirit. In this section, we'll go over the ghost busting basics. The Ghostbuster UI. Equipment, locating the rifts and ghosts, stunning the ghost, teamwork, and capturing the ghost. First, we'll start at the equipment bench. There are four categories of equipment to look at and modify, something we'll talk about in the future. For now, you just need to know about your particle thrower and proton pack, which will affect your ability to tether the ghost. The PKE meter, which allows you to find and stun the ghost, and your trap, which is how you'll ultimately capture the ghost. Fun fact, non-certified attempts to modify the proton pack will void all warranties. We'll discuss how you can learn to modify your equipment in future videos. The Ghostbuster UI is a little easier to understand than the ghost. In the upper left corner, you'll see the room you're currently in. Keep an eye on this when you call out a ghost location to your team. The top middle is the building haunt meter. This is how you know how good or bad the ghost is doing its job. The top right are the current rifts left in the game. If the icon is opaque, it means a rift was destroyed. In the middle lower right, you see the Proton Pack's heat bar, which increases when firing your particle thrower. To avoid overheating, be sure to vent your pack by pressing X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation. 
your heat bar reaches maximum, you'll be forced to auto-vent your pack. Fun fact, manually venting the pack is the fastest way to get your heat bar down. Don't wait for the bar to refill. Remember, recruits, A, B, C, always be venting. Uh, manually. Mm -hmm. To the lower right are your prompts for firing your particle thrower, and for stunning with your PKE, which we'll talk about shortly. Below that is your PKE cooldown clock. Next, we have your secondary equipment. You can use this by pressing RB on Xbox or R1 on PlayStation. Your trap condition is the lower rightest corner. This shows your current trap battery life and whether the trap is deployed or destroyed. When you sprint as a Ghostbuster, in the middle lower screen you'll see a yellow bar. That's your stamina meter. You can sprint by pressing L3. When it reaches zero, you can no longer sprint for a short period of time, so keep an eye on it. The ghost will slime you, prompting a slime meter to appear at the lower middle of your screen. Press and hold B on Xbox or circle on PlayStation to clear it. And remember, you move slower if you have slime on you, so get it off ASAP. If you take enough slime damage, you'll be put in a down state, unable to assist your team. Teammate can revive you or you can pick yourself back up, but picking yourself back up takes quite a bit longer. The bottom left corner shows how much property damage you've caused in the match. Don't worry, we have the best insurance money can buy. Fun fact! Thanks to the national contracts that we have with the Paranormal Contracts Oversight Commission, this is actually true. And finally, the lower mid left screen is where you see your teammates. Here you see what platform they're playing on, their username, and if they are horrified or slimed. Being horrified only happens if you're away from your teammates for an extended period of time. You see an angry red face next to one of your teammates' names? You might want to consider regrouping with your friends, as being horrified can obscure your vision. Amongst other problems, this will also alert you when a teammate has been slimed and put in the down state, so always keep a close eye on this and on your heat bar while on the job. When you enter into a match, your first objective is to locate either the ghost themselves or one of their rifts. I cannot overstate the value of wiping out a ghost's rifts as early as possible, preventing them from respawning and giving you as much time as possible in the event that they successfully haunt, ensuring a smooth victory for your ghostbusting team. It can take a bit of practice, but the subtlety of a rift signal can be differentiated by paying attention to the sudden spike in your meter. If you see an object that's sitting still and throwing a massive PKE signal, you might just have found a rift. Be aware, the ghost is alerted when one of their rifts are exposed. Fun fact, knowing the maps have a limited number of rift spawn locations is extremely helpful. Keep your eyes open for common artifact models that the rifts spawn into unless the ghost moves them. The PKE is one of, if not the most important piece of equipment you'll be using. This device allows you to find the ghost, whether it's hiding or roaming but it will also allow you to locate hidden rifts that the ghost has. More importantly, it's your primary method of tracking a ghost. When within tracking range, directional arrows will pop up around your UI, indicating where the ghost is in relation to you. When you're right on top of the ghost, the directional arrows will fill into a circle and flash orange. The PKE meter also acts as a taser, not just flushing it out of hiding, but after a short delay, also stunning it for a brief period. The PKE blast projects in a short area ahead of you, making it a decent tool for dealing with haunted objects, but also popping any minions in your path. While a useful way for clearing those nuisances, you'll have to decide in the moment whether it's worth the cooldown, as it also resets your PKE meter's use for a short period. Now that we've stunned that pesky ghost and slowed it down for a moment, it's time to throw out your ghost trap. Don't forget to open your trap once you've thrown it out. When the trap is open, you'll see a field of light emitting from the trap. That's where you want to drag the ghost to be sucked down into the trap and captured. Fun fact, the trap has a battery you'll need to manage, but picking it back up will let you recharge it. With that in mind, now that your trap is on the ground, it's time to target the ghost directly with your particle throw. Tethering a ghost is simple in concept, but difficult in practice. Basically, you shoot it with your particle thrower long enough for a tether to form, allowing you to move the ghost into your open trap's capture field. When you are the first Ghostbuster to attach a tether, you'll be considered the primary tether, granting you control over where the ghost is being pulled. Watch for the chain icon. It'll be large when you're the primary tether, as opposed to smaller as a secondary tether. In practice, however, you may find the environment or the ghost's own movement will often block or stymie that. It takes a steady hand and quick reflexes to tether a ghost reliably, but with practice, it's possible. Remember, 
The more tethers from Ghostbusters, the harder it will be for the ghost to escape. So if there's a trap on the ground already, don't hesitate to help out. Once you have control of the ghost by tethering it, you'll want to drag it into the capture field of the trap. Look for the green circle on the ground beneath the ghost to help you aim and drag that pesky poltergeist right into your trap, bringing you and your team of paranormal professionals one step closer to victory. Rift sealed, ghost congealed. All in all, a solid day's work. If the location has customers or tourists that seem a little on edge, you can attempt to calm them down. Approach them and press and hold X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation and hit the colored markers with RT on Xbox or R2 on PlayStation. Remember, if you fully calm a civilian, they become reinforced, as indicated with the shield logo by their scare meter. This makes it so they can't be scared for a limited time. That's our customer service guarantee. Never forget to ping the ghost by clicking R3 or tapping E. And always communicate where and what the ghost is in, so your teammates can sprint in by holding L3 or left shift and help you out. Ghostbusters never work alone. Well, that concludes the basics for both ghost and ghost busting. To continue your training, speak to your immediate supervisor. Don't forget to be kind and rewind for the next recruit. We're the Northern California Ghostbusters, and we're, we're ready, ready to, to believe, believe you. you.